Welcome everybody to another Tuesday training with the Luxury International. I'm Shannon. I'm going to show you guys how to do um, Instagram and Facebook ads, paid ads through KW Command. So I know a lot of you have been wanting to learn how to do this. And um, so here we go. I'm going to show you and bear with me. I'm new to this too, so we're gonna, in some respects, learn together. <laughs> I've only done a couple of these, um, but I do know the basics, and I thought this was a good one to talk about today. So I'm gonna share my screen with you, and we'll get rocking and rolling here. Okay, this to move. There we go. All right, do you guys see my command? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna just back up here. Uh, I was playing around earlier before we hopped on. So let me back up to the beginning and then we'll be ready to go. Um, and I think I have all my other tabs open already that we need. So it should, we should be able to pump through this pretty fast. So first thing you wanna do, and I'm gonna use Cheryl's property as an example. That's why I have Cheryl's um, website open. Um, she's got this beautiful property uh, right now listed uh, at a cool million. And we're going to use that one as our example. And um, first step, so this is not something that everybody does. Um, as you guys I know have all seen our ads before though, you know that we do it here on Luxury and we like to embellish the ads a little bit, put some words over at least the first image. Um, usually you'll see them throughout some images, right? So this is one thing, and you can do this through command as well. If you want to go through um, right here and do it through designs. I'm going to show you though, because it's my favorite. And if anybody's interested in seeing it a little bit more, this is Adobe Spark. So Spark is an Adobe suite of, of mobile app um, apps. There's actually three of them. So it's Spark Post, uh, Spark Page, which designs web pages for you, and then does, uh, Spark Video. Um, you can just pay for the Spark Trio, or I believe you can just even do one if you just wanted to get Spark Post, which is what I'm working in today. Um, so this is Spark. It's really cool. Um, it's very easy to use, and it's templated out for you so that you have uh, social media graphics. So I'm in here every day, as you guys, I'm sure you imagine. But they have some really awesome templates um, that you can start with. So for those of you who feel like maybe you're uh, not as design inclined, um, this really helps you have a good place to start because you can take any of these and you can flip them into different dimensions. Like say this one is a flyer. Um, so it's like sh like an eight and a half by 11 size or something, you know, that's made to be like a piece of paper, but say you want to make that into a square ad for Instagram, it's very easy to just grab that template, resize it and change a couple words if you want to, and then boom, you're done. So, um, this is one of the reasons why I love Spark so much is because their, their designs, their templates are really, really nice. So, um, you can always sort through those if you want to search by a specific um, topic or even um, like uh, purpose if you want to put in there like social you know Instagram things like that I'm actually going to just scoot over into um, the main screen here this is like my dashboard and up here I've got everything already templated out so we're doing a Facebook um, ad slash Instagram ad Primarily Facebook. Um, now, this is my caveat. I'm going to show you guys today how you can actually select it to post on both. So that when you create this add in command, it's going to distribute to Instagram and Facebook. Um, personally, I um, would say separate them. Now, this is just if it were me and my business, because the audience is different. I know we've talked about this before. The audience is different on on each platform. So what you want it to look like and the message you want it to say is slightly different to be truly like really effective. So I would personally split them and do them separately, but I'm going to show you today how you can just run them both um, through the same ad. Okay. So I just selected Facebook 
um, here and over here I can say add and it brings up all my options, text, photo, icons, or the logo. This is similar to Canva where you can insert your brand. So I've already got the luxury logo here inserted as my primary logo. You can see how it's blue up here. It's got already got our brand text styles and our, or our font styles and it's got our brand colors already in here. So um, it makes it really easy for me to operate for luxury and through Spark because it's just gonna automatically default to those colors, those fonts, things like that, okay? So definitely I'm gonna want our logo in there and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select photo and I wanna upload my photo. Now, if you're doing an ad for something else, you can always go here and say find free photos and especially if you pay the $9.99 or whatever it is for the um, service, then you will find a ton of free photos that you can use. So if you're just making an ad for, you know, a download my mobile app ad and you need some free stock footage, it's already in there really easy. They use Unsplash. Um, I am doing one of our properties. Um, so this is how you would do a property ad and I'm going to then pull it off my computer because I've already saved the pictures on my computer, okay? So I'm just gonna navigate to those and if I can remember where I saved them. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Is this the same process for videos as it is for still? Uh, yeah, you'll see whenever we get to that point, you'll see where you can upload a video and, or do still photos. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, I don't know why those photos are not in there. I'm saying I'm going to pull them up and then I'm, they're not in the folder. I thought they were in here. Uh, sorry, guys. My fault. Here they are. Okay, so this is her beautiful property here on Draper Woods. And so um, usually you want that curb shot. We've talked about this a lot before too. If there's a pool and it's a really stellar backyard, if that's their money shot, maybe that's what you want to use. You wanna use that, that wow image for that very first image. So kind of pick out your wow image. Um, the back deck on this house is really nice as well. She's got this beautiful sunset picture. That one wouldn't be bad. Um, generally, you're gonna stick with the front of the house. She did have twilight photos taken of this one, um, which are very beautiful. So I'm gonna use that one. Now, when you pull it into Canva, it's gonna ask you, or sorry, into Spark Post. Um, it's gonna ask you if you want it to pin to the background. So that's gonna like snap it to the size of the, the canvas that you're using or if you wanna be able to move it around freely, so it's gonna put it in like a square where you, where you can see it and move it around, right? So I want it to actually be the full size of the canvas. That's for what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna say snap to background here. And then how easy it is to just adjust is like this. If you wanna actually like crop it more and stuff, you can um, scale, you can rotate it. Um, they just put in this cool remove background feature. If I did that right now, it'd probably take out the sky. It'd look really weird. So I'm not gonna do that on this photo. But just get it uh, kind of where you like it in there. And then um, add some text. So they have some pre-designed fonts in here that are really cool too. Um, so say I wanted to do grand opening, I can literally just click that and boom, like it's already pretty much done for me just by doing that. To edit, you just double click. Um, you notice how grand was different than opening, so this has like two text styles. This is where Spark gets way cooler than Canva because it does this kind of stuff. Canva doesn't do two text styles within the same uh, text box and things like that. Um, but this one's really cool. So I'm going to say um, for sale. And see how it did that two text styles for me. Are you making my open house? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so don't put for sale, put open house. I can, yeah. That's actually going to actually do a second one so that oh, uh, okay. no problem. we have both. <laughs> yeah, she's just ahead of me. So yeah, um, 
Uh, Cheryl's ad is actually for an open house this weekend. So that's why she was saying that. So we can do that though. Um, I'm still in caps here. As long as if you're using one of these that has two text styles, as long as you kind of keep it the same, you, if you start going over letters, then it'll screw up the, the text styles and, and they're here and that's where it gets a little hairy. But if you kind of keep it around the same number of, of letters, then it should just pop them in like this where it's pretty, pretty evenly nice out nicely evened out. Um, so we can do that open house. And then um, I'm actually, because it's an open house ad, I'm going to do this a little bit differently um, and put a second thing of text. Now, this is the one thing you guys have to remember with Facebook is that front image, that first image that you use, it can't have text on it. That's more than 20% of the total canvas. Okay. So if you look at this and you say, this is a hundred percent, so 20%, you know, might be about that, I guess. Um, you kind of have to just eyeball it. Um, you can't, but your text cannot be, so basically what they're saying is they don't want, this would be like 50%, okay? That's half of the photo is text now. That's what they don't want. So make sure that you, whatever you do, are, you are adding text on there, that you're kind of thinking about that 20% rule and that your text can't be too large or else they're gonna reject the ad, okay? Now, I've got that one on there. I do wanna put the dates and the times um, on there as well. So I'm just gonna say add text for, in easy, so that I just have a blanket text and then I can change the font, okay? So let's see, Saturday, is it Sunday or Saturday, Cheryl? It's Sunday, right? It's Sunday, one to three. Sunday, one to three. Okay, thank you. So Sunday, the 27th. So Sunday, oops, I did it again. Sunday, September 27th. And I'm going to do it as a second text box. Whew, that's big. Duplicate it. And then I double click to edit. And then go one to three, oops, let's just leave those off. Okay, and now these are what I wanna change the font. So I'm just gonna quickly go here and Montserrat is one of our standard fonts. And then make that one Montserrat, okay. So you guys can use the arrows to adjust um, or the mouse, okay? Um, you see here, you can align the text differently. This one's really cool, the capitalize and fit. It actually would take everything in there. Let me show you really quick how that works. If you're on separate lines like this, there it's centered, right? If you want it to all fit that box, you click that and now it's gonna make change everything to where it's like stretched and bigger or smaller to fit that shape. Um, I use that one a lot, I like it a lot. So we could do it like that if we wanted, that would look nice. Um, I'm actually going to just leave it this way cause I want it in one line so it doesn't really matter. See I'm just clicking and dragging that corner and that's gonna change the size of it. Actually, let's put it up here because it's going to be so much more visible. See how, because I was running into this sky. I was trying to avoid that sky because my text is white and it was kind of still just hard to read. So I'm going to stick it right up here. You can also group the items. So you see how I selected both items. Now I can say group. Now anytime I click to move those items, they'll be grouped together. So that's kind of nice. Um, these also, if you go here, if you click on the um, text yourself, you can see the spacing pops up. So you can make the letters like more spaced out or closer together. I want to actually decrease the line space because it, it looked a little far apart to me. So do that and that looks pretty good. So I think I'm going to leave it like that. I like it. I'm going to pop luxury down here in the right hand corner. I just like it down there. 
usually. And that's pretty good. I'm going to leave it at that. I like it like that. Um, the text doesn't look like it's going to be more than about 20%. I should be okay with that size. I'm good to go. So I'm going to download my image and then just say download. It's going to automatically download it into my downloads folder. So you want to go through and do that. If you have, if you have um, other photos that you want to do that too, you can. Um, maybe you want to go through and do a few, like three or four photos that have either open house or um, now showing for sale, just listed, some of those big, like, um, you know, big text, the, uh, like opening um, advertisement kind of statements, right? And do it on a few of them. I'm just going to do it on the one for time purposes. So you want to do all that first and save it onto your computer. Okay, and then we're going to go over to command. So log into your command. One little trick, guys, if you are having a time, hard time remembering what button is what in your navigation on command, if you click the KW up at the top, it's going to expand that out so that you can see your um, labels. Okay, and we want or campaigns. So we're going to click on campaigns. And then we are going to do, this is your dashboard. It brings you straight to it. It's just, you know, like any other dashboard, it's got some quick access views of what's going on. And then um, we're gonna navigate over to paid ads. So this is all the paid ads that he had running or he had one completed and he's got some drafts in here. I'm in Jason's account. So he's done one through here recently. And then um, I'm gonna go over here to the top right hand corner and select create a new campaign. So we're doing a social ad that is paid. So that's the one I wanna click. You can see here, they've got it set up so you can do direct mail, email, um, Google ads, the social posts. Take note of that. Anybody who wants to schedule posts ahead of time, you can now do that through command. Only to Facebook and Twitter, I believe though. So we're gonna do a paid social ad. What do we want to name it? So um, we're going to name this open house on, and this is Draper Woods. So that's just the purpose, Cheryl's last name, so I know who's, which agent it's for. And then that's the uh, street. So we are going to advertise a listing. If you're doing a listing ad, obviously you're advertising a listing. Now, these things right here, I'm told, don't change anything as far as the ad goes. It's more of um, to keep things organized um, in, for you guys, for your own um, tracking purposes, okay? Um, we are going to do today both Facebook and Instagram, okay? And then you just click set up campaign. All right. Can I ask a question? Yep. Do we, um, I think that uh, from what I remember in my command, I only have Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> Did they up, I haven't been in command recently. <laughs> um, have they updated it to where we can connect our Instagram or is this going through the Facebook I to I Instagram? Mean, it might go because Facebook owns Instagram. So most things do go through Facebook and to connect to Instagram, but either way you have to connect it. Connect what though? Instagram? You have to connect command with your Facebook and your Instagram separately. It's not going to just automatically okay. do it for you. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. that there was the option for Instagram. I don't think um, the last time I went in and did just social ads. Yeah. So I'll have to look at it that. Then. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Thanks. Yeah. So when you guys pull this up, um, it's going to default to show only my listings. So it may pop up and have nothing here. Um, if you don't have any listings, don't, don't worry. Don't freak out like it's not pulling from the MLS like it's supposed to. Um, just change this to all listings and it'll start showing. Um, as you can see, because we are an expansion team, so Jason being team leader has like every MLS in here. So he's going to see stuff from like everywhere. So we have like literally like every state in here. Um, but then you're just, uh, you want to search for the property that you're listing. So if it's yours, obviously you could just leave it on my listings. It'll probably show up right there in that screen and you can just click it and be good to go. 
what is it, 14712 South Draper Woods. So here it is right here. I'm gonna say select. And this is really cool. What it does is it actually pulls the information straight out of the uh, MLS for you. So um, it pulls that first picture that's listed and it pulls, this is the description of the property. Now, please pay attention to this very closely when you guys start doing this on your own because it pulls the description, but see how it, it cut it off? Because it's limiting you at 250 characters. This is one thing I don't like about command, I will say. Um, it, because it limits you to 250, that's not very many characters. Um, when you do a Facebook ad through Facebook, it doesn't limit you like that. Um, so that's kind of one of like the downers. Um, it does say recommended is 125 characters or less. That is true. The shorter ads are, that is better. They do better. But, um, you know, if you want to do a longer one, you can. Hi. Um, can I, um, I'm, I got a, Peter, this is to go, is that all right? Okay. And then, um, Cheryl. Hey, what are you ordering me? <laughs> What's for lunch, Cheryl? <laughs> Sorry, you guys. <laughs> hey, I did want to chime in on the Instagram connection. As long as you have your, there's Facebook connection and there's also Facebook post scheduling. There's two separate connections there. As long as post scheduling is connected via your business account, it will automatically link to Instagram. There there's you no go. separate connection there. Cool. Thank you. Can you say that again? You kind of cut out. I didn't hear it. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's two Facebook connections. If you go to where your name is in the upper right hand corner and pull down settings and check in there, the very first screen will be all of your connected apps. One will be Facebook post scheduling and the other one will be Facebook ads manager. It's the ads manager connection in Facebook because it owns Instagram will automatically make that connection. Cool. Thank you, Charles. Appreciate that. So where was I in here in the description? So um, when you look at like, I actually just Googled the property. Let me pull it over and show you guys. And this is the entire description. But when you look and see in the campaign, it cut it off because it's going to cut it off right there at that 250 character mark. So just pay attention to that. Uh, make sure that that you don't leave it like that, that you don't just have it, let it pull in whatever it's going to do and then keep going. Because um, then it would just look kind of silly. You have an ad with a half of a sentence. <laughs> um, so you can kind of just read through it. Stunning home. Um, I like the beginning of this. Spacious lot at, and the quiet cold stack. Let's see. So we want to say um, open house. Um, this stunning home. I'm going to change it just a little bit. Could be yours. Um, Do see it Sunday, September twenty seventh, one to three. Um, so I know I've mentioned this at least once before. Um, you usually want the main purpose that the main reason for your ad, the text and associate to that. Um, is going to be like one of the first things you say in your ad. So you kind of have that first like opening statement, that opening sentence or whatever, that that wow pop, right? So that's the open house. Um, and then this stunning home could be yours. So that's how I'm kind of like dragging them in, you know? Um, so that's kind of my opening statement here. And then see it Sunday, there's the details of the open house. And then um, it goes into the rest of it, right? So I am getting pretty close to my 250. I probably can't add too much more. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, maybe actually put um, contact us. Oh, see, I'm going to run into my 250, so I can't even do that. Let's see. So I'm going to say 
because uh, this is going to be like a lead capture and I don't, I'm running out of spaces. I might have to erase some of that sentence even. But um, I want to mention like, what is the, what do I want them to do, right? So I want them to click the button. So we're going to say click, see, or learn more, sorry, learn more. See, I can't even do it. <laughs> a warm, let's see, gated community. Let's just say situated in the gated community of Draper Heights with breathtaking valley and mountain views. Spacious lot at end of cul-de-sac. Learn, click learn more for details and all, nope, can't even do it. So we're gonna do it like that for more details. Learn more for, I don't like it because it says learn more for more. I didn't like that. So learn more for all details. Okay, and then I wanna add, oh, it's not gonna let me. I don't like this character limit thing, in case you guys haven't noticed. <laughs> um, I wanna add a couple emojis in here. So I had an extra space there, so I know I can do that. And then I can add in an emoji here. Let's do an announcement, a little megaphone. And then I can take Sunday down to an S-U-N. And then I can put in here and I wanna put in a little house. Okay. So Shannon, if I could jump in and add on that, uh, ads with, Emojis do perform better than ads without. I know not all of us love emojis, right. but it's in our best interest to love emojis. Yeah. Um, given the character limit, I just wanted to say my best practice has become making a template where for every single ad, I put the same information in the top. And then in the description at the bottom, you, see, you have another 250 characters to put the, I love this house because stuff. And right. that won't show up in all ads, but the uh, at least the core information open house time date and the core information about the house with emojis can show up at the top. And that's, I will say that's been a good change for me. Good, cool. I like that suggestion. Thank you. The template, create a little template for yourself. That's perfect. Cause then you, you know, you're always getting that key stuff in there and you're not going to forget that at, at least. Right. Where are you right. storing that template um, at? Yeah. Um, Charles. I'm not, a huge fan of emojis myself, but I've learned to love them because he's right. They perform better. Uh, people like to see all the color. I think yeah. it's part of it. It's, it's more eye catching when there's color breaking up the text. So yeah, definitely spend some time and put some emojis in there. Thanks Charles. Um, so where I store it uh, because command is connected to G3. That's pretty much like all I can do here. So because command um, is connected to G Suite, the, a really good place to store it is called I'm Google I'm going to go ahead and take that out just so that I have a little bit more room for some emojis. Um, let's see. You can also go in here and search eyes. Thanks, Charles. I heard that. To find them if you don't know where certain ones are. Sunday, September 27th, 1 to 3 p.m. Situated in the gay community of Heights, breathtaking Valley and Mountain Views. Click learn more for all the details. And then I'm going to say um, my little mouse click. And then um, I want to also choose the little like pointing down finger. Because right, because we're directing them down there to the button. Okay. So I think that looks good. I'm going to leave it at that. And so your headline is what's going to show up right here. So again, you can just kind of like repeat this essentially. Um, open house. It's whatever's going to you want to really catch their eyes. So it's usually like the most important part. Um, I am just going to do this because it makes it easy. It's limited to characters too, but you guys, it's going to cut off at a certain point as well. So just know that. Um, and then the description shows up underneath of it. It's limited as well. The one cool thing I liked how, how Charles, you said you put in some of the like fluffy stuff um, down here in the description as well. Cause like you said, it gives you another 250 characters. 
Um, this is cool though too, is they've got these suggestions. So it says, try this. Uh, you could be coming home to this. You can shuffle it. Schedule a private tour with me today. Uh, view photos and videos of this home. So it's got a few. I kind of like this one. You can say use suggestion and it's just going to plop that in there for you. I kind of like that. I don't know. It's something if you're like really just kind of not wanting to think about it. There are some days where I have written so many ads that day where I'm just like my brain is done writing ads. <laughs> so it's kind of nice to have some of those things in there. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that one and then um, make sure you kind of just look at this is always going to show you over here your preview of what it looks like so far. And so check and make sure that your text is looking good in that area and that you like where all this how all this is looking. Shannon. Take a peek and in the chat real quick. I'm going to save add text. So here the next one is the media. So this is Kathy where you would add your video if you're doing video instead of stills. Okay, so you would actually toggle this to video to upload it. So here though with the images, it's pretty cool because it automatically pulls up everything that's in the MLS for you. So um, if you didn't do any like embellishments and things like that, like I was doing at the very beginning, you could just come straight here and start plopping in photos, which I am going to do a little bit of. Um, I want to say add images though. And um, let's see, upload an image because I want to get that one that I embellished. preview and crop. So it's going to show me what that looks like. And it's perfect size because I already designed it to be the perfect size. So we say save image. So now put that one in there and you see over here in my preview, my computer will catch up with me. It'll show over here in a second. It's thinking. Um, but it plopped it in next to it. So it automatically there it goes. It automatically kind of turns this into a carousel of images once you add a second image. So it's pretty cool. Um, here, I want to just uh, delete that first image because it's obviously it's the same image that I just put my embellishments on. So I don't want to use the same Im image twice. And then I'm going to say add more and I'm going to go through here and just pick a few other photos of the house. So I like this kitchen one. <coughs> Sorry. My dog loves to bark at every little noise she hears. Save image. Do you see how it was like allowing me to kind of crop each one? So if you have like a um, more of a portrait style um, image, then you can change that. I'll show you that here in just a second. Um, let's see. This house is just gorgeous. Um, here, let's pick this one, preview and crop. So if it's, this one's wide again, but if it's not, you can change it to be square or you can change it to be a vertical and it's going to recrop that for you based on the orientation of the photo. So I'm going to leave it though as a wide. And it's good to have a couple of these because you know what, people want to see the inside of the house. Um, they want to be able to flip through. I'm gonna pick some of the like really cool aspects of this house. They've got a home theater in here. Gorgeous, love it with the Deadpool poster. That's awesome. <laughs> um, don't, uh, this is my little suggestion because we have run ads to find that, that this is true. Um, it's best to leave out pictures of the bedrooms and I know that people may, may dispute that, saying that you always include a picture of the master. I'm going to say don't. Um, and bathrooms, leave those out. There's two reasons. One, those are intimate spots. Okay, those are intimate places in the home. And so for it to be one of the first images that people see, it's not actually the best thing to, to show them that first off. Um, they found a lot of times too that seeing those in person because they're intimate places in a home that seeing them in person is really what makes the impact rather than a picture. Second, it gives them something else to want to see. If you don't include a picture of the master, 
that's going to give them more incentive to click that button so that they can then go to the page and see all the pictures because you didn't include a picture of the master or the bathrooms, right? So that, those are my two like little reasons why and leave those out. It gives them something else to, to want to see. And then that's going to give them more of a reason to click that, that button. And uh, I want to include maybe one or two more. So I'm going to just do one more. There's this one's good too here. The pool room with the sticks on the wall. Love it. And there we go. Okay. Now it does stop us at five. Um, so you know what, actually I want to, cause I didn't realize I was already at five. I want to include that back shot of the home. This one with the deck. Actually I want to do this one. That's even better. The view, look at that view. I could imagine living there. <laughs> cool. So then you guys can see here how it's um, going to buy a house, Shannon. <laughs> going to show you that carousel of all the photos. You can also flip through here and see the mobile version, so you know like it's how it's looking in mobile. There's your Instagram story, which is where we're going to post this to. So I'll show you how it's going to look as a carousel and story as well. Now this is going to if you upload an image here, which we did. Um, it's going to automatically place that on the photo, either the left or the right. So this one you can put in, um, this is the uh, brokerage logo, or you can plop in luxury, which is what we wanna do. That was actually the KW East Valley logo, so that would be the wrong one for this property anyway. Um, so I'm gonna go here. And I can remember where I saved them all. Uh, this one. So it's just kind of like prop, crop that for you automatically. And then it's going to import that in. The ownership statement is that each office is independently owned and operated. It's not required. You don't have to put that on there if you don't want. So it's, so to see there's my luxury logo. And now it's going to put that on like on every single one on every image. So that's pretty cool too. Okay, and then I'm gonna say save my media. So that's where I'm at. And here we go, we want to configure this. What is it, what is not required? Oh, this one, okay. Um, so, this is not going to show up on yours, the, the page. Well, no, it will. You just have to select your page because it's going to like basically want to know if you, you should have your business page connected. So if you want to post it on like your, your personal page, your business page or whatever, if you have any other pages connected, they'll all show up. And you're always going to want to post that to your business page. Um, so this one for us is in Utah. So I'm going to select that one. And then do you want to show it up, show up as an Instagram ad or a story? Click story, and this is why. Stories do better. You're gonna get more for your money if you do it as a, as a story instead of as an ad. They just do better. Stories are more um, frequently looked at. There are people that get on Instagram every day and just flip through stories and hardly look through their feed. So definitely pick story there. And then what we wanna do is how it's defaulted to use the Facebook lead gen form. So this is what we were talking about last time where it's got that that lead capture form, okay? So definitely click that. This is super important of what we're talking about today. Click that because that's going to pop up a form when they click that learn more button. It's not gonna take them directly to the property. It's gonna pop up a form that automatically inputs their information. So they're really, they're not even typing anything in. Facebook already has their info. They're just confirming it that it's correct because it's gonna auto populate their phone number and their email from what Facebook has in their records. So um, they're really just gonna say confirm and then it'll take them to the property. This right here, follow up destination URL, that's where you have to put in, where am I taking to them to after they confirm their information? So you have to tell it where to go, okay? 
So on here is I'm going to go to my website. So in this case, I'm going to Cheryl's website and I'm gonna just search the property and find the actual property page. So here it is. And then I'm gonna grab this URL. Now, I'm actually gonna take this one step further and I'm gonna do it as a bit.ly only because it's one more piece of analytics and one more piece of tracking. If I do it as a bit.ly link, because bit.ly does their own tracking as well. So it's just what one more piece of analytics. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Can we do this with um, like say some other agents home if we just want to gather like, I mean, can we advertise? someone That's, else's listing will it show up as us being the agent what kind of like some of the other apps do yeah so it's your ad so it's gonna be coming from you posted where you put it and with your name associated to it but as far as if you can advertise somebody else's listings that's a per brokerage um policy you have to check with your broker on that yeah i i do get that okay so then yeah as long as your brokerage and your broker says yeah you can advertise usually it's people in your own office you know, it has to be those people's listings, but yeah, just make sure you check with your broker guys before you do anything of somebody else's listings. Usually you also have to get the agent's permission as well. Um, most brokers ask for that anyway. So now that I, I just have the, the bit.ly um, Chrome extension, so it makes it real easy where I'm, once I'm on the page, I can just click that little button and it creates the bit.ly link for me. And then I can change it, um, the, the name of it. My, keyboard keeps crapping out here. So, and that's just for my own purposes again, so that I know um, which property that is. And then if I say save, that'll go away. Edit bit.ly link successful. So I did say copy, so it copied it onto my um, clipboard. And now I can just go in here and paste it in. It's going to put that HTTPS thing twice. That's funny, but there it is. So now that's saying when they click learn more, that's going to take them to first the Facebook lead gen page so that they have to enter in their information. And then they say confirm. Once they hit confirm, it's going to take them to the property. That's what we want. Okay. And in here, in the at the targeting if you toggle this to custom this is the, your audience okay um i do suggest putting it on the city where where is the house located your radius it can't be less than 15 uh it can't be more than 50. so you can make it as big or as small as you want it based on you know the density of the population things like that but definitely do it around the city that the house is located um and then if you know, like maybe you know in your area, there's a lot of people that move from this city into this area or something like that. Add in, you can add in as more cities if you want. Um, typically we just do it like this. Um, I might like pop this up to like 25 mile radius because um, it is in Utah. Um, and then here on the interests, this is my, my little caveat for the interests. You can do some of these. They're not going to hurt as long as you leave it on or. You can do or or and, okay? If you put it on and and then you start doing some of these interests. So say one of them that's actually not a bad one to do is realtor.com. So this is saying anybody who is interested or searched on realtor.com is going to find those people and put it in front of those people. If you say start putting in a bunch of stuff, so say I do Zillow, also and now i don't want to do premier agent because that's going to be the agents right i don't want to put my ad in front of a bunch of agents necessarily i want to put it in front of people so i'm going to say zillow um so say i did both of those and it says and and it's now going to shrink my audience to people who only have those interests but also it's going to shrink it down to people who only have both because i said and realtor.com and Zillow. Okay. If you say, or it's going to say they can have one or the other. If it's, and they have to have both. So do you, do you guys understand how that's going to really shrink down my audience size? 
Um, so be careful with these because you don't, if you start doing that, you're really, really, really limiting yourself as to how many people are seeing these. So leave it on or I would just do that all the time, unless you really know a, like a tight niche group that you're trying to get, which generally for listing ads, we want it to just get in front of a bunch of people. Um, I would leave it on or so you can do though a few if you want it's really up to you if you want to do these or, or, or not um, we generally don't we just leave it on the, the location and and call it a day um, so I'm going to let's uh, leave we'll leave realtor.com on there just for fun um, and then we did it I did it at 25 mile radius okay and then so we're on custom audience. The other thing I want to mention is see how it does say target my database. Say you're doing a different ad or an ad or you wanted to put this listing for some reason in front of just your database. You can choose that as well and it's only going to target your database. Okay. But for listings, we want to just get as many people as we can. We don't want to limit that number. So we're going to leave it pretty broad and pretty general. Okay. So there's everything um, as far as the looks of the ad goes and the audience. This is what the ad's gonna look like when it posts. Again, you can change it up here and look at it on mobile. Make sure everything looks good. And Insta story, same thing. Okay. Now, budget. That's the last thing on here that you have to do. Um, we tend to do on listings, we, we do as the agreement with you guys, with luxury, the team members, we do some ad spend on your listings, you guys all know that. Um, so we only do about $10 or so, $15. Um, it's kind of depending on the property. Um, so it's depending on how much you want, how much reach you want, and how many leads you want. If you only do $10 and you do it for four days, you're probably not gonna get a ton of leads. Uh, but if you put $50 towards it and do it for 10 days, so that's $5 a day, um, you're going to, you're going to probably get a good handful, um, you know, maybe 12 or so, I would say. Um, don't expect everybody, you know, to click on this, uh, you know, realistically, it's like, it's, it's, you do $50, you get maybe 12 leads um, at the most. And that's on a really interesting property, you know, too, if it's not a really stellar property, um, you might not expect as many people to click the button on it. So just kind of keep those things in mind. You want your duration, a, a 10 days is a good solid, um, usually that's a good amount. Now it depends on the listing and the purpose of your ad as well. This is an open house ad, so we may not want it to go that long. Um, I don't want it to go too far past that date because then people are gonna see it on the 30th and be like, but the 27th was, you know, four days ago that's you know so so for that reason I would actually back it up and maybe have it end on like the 28th or the 29th okay so um that and then the budget again is here so if I put $30 in it's going to show me 250 a day you know if I want to put in $25 there's my see it's how it's going to calculate that daily budget for you and see how it just kind of um, updates. Okay. I definitely don't do anything less than a dollar a day or it's really just not going to do you any good. I would say two, $2 a day is probably a good minimum. Um, a good results is going to be $5 a day. Um, and so around at least $5 a day, maybe for like five to seven days for a listing ad is probably about. Is that, is that per channel? Is that per channel or? No. Nope. So what this does is it takes that total and it divides it up among Facebook and Instagram. Now, when you're in here in the ads, um, where is it at? Uh, or maybe it's in this spot. There should be, oh, here, yeah, it's right here. So it's, it'll ask you if you want it to dist distribute evenly or if you want to use automatic placement. Go ahead and click automatic placement. Um, and this will kind of tell you like, like um, daily, how much to spend like on each one, you can kind of adjust it. Um, if you distribute evenly, it's going to always just do like, you know, half of the budget on this one, half of the budget on that one. 
if you're in here, you can, I believe you can go in and change it. Like you notice that it's starting to do more, or, um, you know, you can go in and adjust. Um, their intelligence, yeah, there it should say, there you go. So it's going to like use the Facebook algorithm basically to, to automatically place wherever's doing better is that's the difference. Okay. So, um, you can kind of set your daily budget for each one, but then it's going to adjust based on where is it seeing more activity. Okay. So use the advantage of the, the really smart technology. <laughs> that's what I say. Um, so once you have that set and you know, that's how you want it, you're going to say save and let's see everything should be good. So once you are good, you know you're happy with it and everything, you say publish campaign, which I think I am happy with this one. And we're gonna go and see how it works. Um, 15, yeah. I was just double checking um, the settings, make sure I am happy with it. And I am, so I'm going to go ahead and say publish campaign. And it's gonna ask you about the ad account. Make sure that it's the correct credit card and all of that. And then you can say create campaign. So it's pulling all of that. You wanna make sure that you have your ad account set up in Facebook. You've got payment already inputted into Facebook and everything. So that, that all just pops up and you don't have any troubles with any of that and it'll just go ahead and do it for you so it pulls your payment from facebook not from command mm -hmm. okay i believe though like it said it had to add a credit card or whatever so you can actually add it in command if you need to add a new one or something like that but um to get it all set up i would set it up in facebook so there it's pending review starts tomorrow so when, who's reviewing um, it? Huh? What does that mean? What does that mean? Pending review. review so that's what who? I was saying earlier about Facebook rejecting it. Facebook actually oh. reviews every ad that, that gets put out. So they have to approve it. It takes, I've seen it take anywhere up to 24 hours to, to approve. Um, but it depends on like what time of day you're, you're asking for it. Like when, when you're in like the heavy part of the day, I've noticed it takes longer. Like, so if I'm in the middle of business hours, it's, it takes several hours before it will approve. But sometimes if it's like later at night, like nine or 10 o'clock at night, if I post one, then it, it approves in less than an hour sometimes. So you get a notification that it's been approved. Uh -huh. the, yep. Where does You'll that get notification, a Facebook come? notification Oh, okay. Okay, cool. So, uh -huh. so one thing on approvals, keep in mind, the reason KW ads do so well is KW is batching them. So at MegaCamp, they talked about how if you're a single agent going through the Facebook ads manager, you might spend 50 bucks. But when you run your ad through command, we're spending $20 million a day on ads with Facebook and Facebook rewards big spend. So 20 million versus $50, right? Um, so that's why it takes a 24 hour period sometimes for your ad to be approved. And it says it's 24 hours is because they're going to batch that in the middle of the night. Good call. I did not even know that. That's interesting. So yeah, he's right though. They, they do, they award um, the big ad spends. And so that is gonna make, help your ad do better because they're batching them and posting them all together. And so it makes it look like you're just putting that much more towards your ad. That's awesome. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. That helps me make my decisions. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's really a big reason to get into command for sure. Yeah, definitely. That is a plus. Um, the other, I think really cool part about this now is those leads, um, that, you know, whenever they fill out that form and it's going to push all of those leads directly into command now. So, um, in a couple of days I can come in here and look at it and it'll have like a number of leads here. If anybody's clicked, then it'll actually start showing me numbers here. And then it, you, those people are automatically placed right here into command. I believe you can click right here and see those, not, maybe not only ones that are already done. Correct. Does it do and so are they, are they automatically assigned a smart plan when they come in through this lead capture program or do we have to go in and individually like vet each one and you know, do all that. that depends on how your command is set up. 
So Correct. right now everything's manual because unfortunately in yeah. smart plans, the only trigger we have is a manual trigger, but in the future we'll be able to sign automatic triggers and it's coming very soon. Uh, God, I hope so it's what, this year. <laughs> yeah. So what smart plans would you recommend tagging these people? I mean, with like, I created my own custom smart plan, like I put in the chat. My one thing right now is to build out my guides, my buyer and seller guides with our complete process. Because what you can then do is put them on a multiple multiple mode drip, whether you, where you hit them with an initial phone call to try and attempt contact, then they'll get a text, then an email, text, email, text, email for six weeks. But every email and text is gonna point them towards a different um, guide topic and kind of get them to download your app or use your site page to look at your guide. Cool. Can you put me on your drip campaign like that? Like, I'd like to see what it looks mm -hmm. like from the consumer end. Can you add me to your mine's, database? <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty ghetto right now. Um, <laughs> but I'll, like I'll I said, that's, that's my it. big effort right now. Cause I am getting a ton of leads coming in. I, I want to make sure, I mean, before you even run an ad, your, your beginning with the end in mind really should be where am I putting these, uh, campaign wise before I even do the ad spend. So right now I have a, I have a campaign called, uh, I forget what it's called, Captured. I think it's just New Lead Captured, I think I called it. And it's a three by three, but by text, cause mo because millennials. <laughs> and then um, various, I'm combining various existing campaigns like um, the Promote My App campaign and others. Uh, to make it a longer campaign process. Cool. Yeah, and I believe uh, Luxury is going to be building out. Thank some, you. Yeah, thanks, Charles. Luxury is going to be building out a bunch of smart plans, too. Um, I know that we've started on some, so hopefully we'll have those real soon, too. And yeah, unfortunately, it is manual right now, but once we can get that automatic, it'll be a lot nicer. Um, but yeah, right now you've got to have it. You got to go in and do it, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I have, have four noticed, pages of leads right now. I have to put on that trip today because they yeah. came in over the last couple of days and I'm behind. So it is a drag to have to go in and manually. The yeah. good news is, is you can select a whole page and assign them all at once. You don't have to do them individually. Thank you. So you That's can do a bulk edit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just going to, just to piggyback on what he said. I have seen that. Yeah. You can click right here when, when your leads start coming in, you can click on that number, right? And then this is where it takes you. It actually pulls them up in your contacts. So you can go here, like he was saying, you can select everybody on that page and then all at once you can add them to, to the, the drip campaign. Shannon, I know we're running over, but can I have you show them something like a best practice I found yeah. on where to look at all your leads in one place? Yeah. Will you click on the home icon? And then in the upper right-hand corner, go to Customize Home. Okay. And you see all those widgets on the right. The bottom one's leads. What I did is I drug leads to the top. Oh, good call. And then I, I put it on the right right there. Yep. And when you hit Apply, all of your leads are going to be the first thing you see when you log in to Command. Nice. So that's a good best practice. Yeah, that is good. Awesome.